It's Amanda here and today we're talking about the latest collection from Lethal Cosmetics. They were kind enough to send over the entire Wildflower collection for us to check out. So I'm going to show you close-ups of everything. We're going to see, of course, swatches. I'm going to do lip swatches. You're going to get to see all of these products in action in a tutorial as well. This collection has four blushes, four of the Haze Plush Lip Creams, and a 12 pan palette. The shadows from the palette are also sold as singles. So if you watch this, see the swatches, and you don't really feel drawn to the entire palette, you can just pick and choose the shadows as you please. Because these lethal palettes are pretty pricey, this is $52 for this 12 pan palette. So if you're not feeling all, or at least most of the shades in here. I would definitely recommend just grabbing the singles. You can also buy the palette packaging, just the palette itself, and then put your own shades in here. I love that Lethal's palettes are so fully customizable. One of the many things I love about the brand. So obviously we have a lot of pieces to get into, a lot of details to look at. So let's start with the blushes first. The blushes are shipped in these little individual cardboard sleeves. They have a window so you can see to the shade inside. And then when you look on the back of the little envelopes that they come in, they are each individually labeled as well and then you can just remove them from the shipping packaging and place them into any magnetic palette that you please. Lethal does make these small palettes that perfectly fit four of their cheek products. So here you see all four of these Wildflower Collection blushes. These are all a shimmery finish and they're priced at $15.50 US each. All four blushes are really bright, springy colors, and as usual, we have an interesting, unique mix of shades. Lethal always does something interesting, in my opinion, and these blushes are absolutely no exception. I know a lot of people really want to see something different, so yellow, purple, even this red, which has become more popular lately, isn't the most run-of-the-mill blush color. I think these are going to be very popular blushes. Next up, let's take a look at the lip products. We have four Haze Plush lip creams in this Wildflower collection. All of the lip products come in boxes that look exactly the same on the outside, but they are, again, labeled with a little sticker. And then when you open up inside, you can see that they are in clear tubes, so it becomes a little bit easier to differentiate. These also have the shade names on stickers on the bottom of the tubes. And then the packaging is just exactly the same as their regular lip cream products. There's no difference, no special packaging for this collection. They have a small precision slanted doe foot applicator. These lip creams have a very light, sweet vanilla type of scent. It is not incredibly overwhelming. It's really just enough that if you sniff the tube, you can notice it. At least for me, maybe it appears stronger for other people, but it's just enough that it doesn't smell like a chemically kind of waxy lipstick smell, if you know what I'm talking about. That classic really makeup-y scent that quote-unquote unscented makeup products tend to have. I do prefer personally scented makeup, so this is a nice balance between, in my opinion. These lip creams have a soft, satiny matte finish. They don't dry out my lips, and that is a lot coming from somebody who has incredibly dry skin and dry lips. So I do find these to be comfortable. However, the trade-off there is that they're not 100% completely transfer proof. These will wear off with smooching, eating, drinking, that kind of thing. But for me, it's worth it for the comfort level. And some shades are more even and opaque than others. Like you can see with this purple shade, it's not a one swipe perfect opaque coverage. I could build this up some more if I really tried to, but the darker colors are a little bit less solid. 
Lastly, we have this Wildflower palette. We're gonna take a close-up look at this palette and also some finger and brush swatches before I get into the application demo. This is the outer packaging of the Wildflower palette. This is priced at 52 US dollars. It comes with this little sleeve, so you can see the shade names on the back. You're not gonna find this on the back of the actual palette, and I'll show you why here in a minute. This sleeve also has the ingredients list, so if that is relevant to you, whether it's for allergies or any other reason, make sure you hang on to it. Then the actual palette slides out. It has the same graphic on the front, but on the back you can see there are all these very convenient little holes instead of the shade names so that you can easily push out the shadows inside and swap them around. I love that about these palettes. When you open up the palette inside, there is a nice big mirror, and then we have a little bit of a shifty, iridescent, metallic background. We have a wide variety of finishes in this palette. There is one satin shade. It's that light, dusty pink on the very top row. And then the bright pink matte in here is a UV reactive neon matte. There are four more just regular mattes. You can easily see there are the two purples, this cool beige, and then a deep navy. And then the shimmers in here are all either duochromes or multichromes. There's two multichromes. That's the shades Untamed and Clover. And then the remaining shimmers are regular duochrome shadows. I don't own a black light, so I can't really show you any of the UV reactive properties of that bright neon pink, but I am gonna show you finger swatches, brush swatches, and then a whole bunch of different lighting. That way you can see what these shadows look like and how they react to different lighting situations that you might be in. First, let's just see the labeled swatches close up. I think this is particularly important for this palette because a lot of the shimmers, in my opinion, do look pretty similar. So you really need a close-up look at these and to see them in many different lighting situations to really get an appreciation for the subtle differences that exist with these duochromes and multi-chrome shadows in particular. This first set of swatches that you saw were just my regular studio lighting. That's my big ring light and all those bright lights that I use to film my videos. This is what they look like with just a regular overhead light bulb. This is the indoor lighting that most of us are going to be in most of the time at home, at school, at work at the shoe store, wherever you are, this is mostly how this palette's going to look just in day-to-day -day life, at least on my skin tone. Now I wanna show you what these look like with some flash in a darkened room because it really lets the sparkles come out. And I think this is really when you can see a big significant difference with all of these different duochrome and multi-chrome shadows. These don't really get a chance to shine, pun intended, if they're not given this sort of off to the side type of lighting. Now you've seen everything close up, you've seen everything swatched. Now we're gonna move on to a little application demo tutorial for the look that I'm wearing today. Of course, I'm wearing a bunch of these products. I'm wearing two of the blushes and a few of the eyeshadows. So let's jump into that tutorial demo now. Because I'm going to mix two of these blushes, I'm just gonna put first Carnation on one cheek and then I'll put Aster on the other cheek. That way you get a little blush swatch type of experience with two out of the four blushes here. And then in the end, I'll go back and swirl those shades together and even out my blush look. But I thought this was a good little bonus moment because I am gonna go hard with the blush on this look. So this is just a soft little application of Carnation. I'm gonna do the same with Aster because I think these do tend to look kind of similar on my skin, but when you see them one on each cheek, I think you can appreciate just the difference in tone because Aster still reads a little bit pinky on me, but when you see it compared to Carnation, both actually applied to the same base, you can see that little lilac action that Aster gives. And then mixed together, I think these are just the beautiful 
bright springy cheek combo that I really need right now, especially for this look. I love the idea of doing this really high, dramatic, 80s-esque type of blush look. It's not necessarily going to be my everyday type of blush application method, but I thought it ended up looking really cute. And since this collection doesn't have any bronzer or highlighter or contour, I thought why not be a little bit extra with the blush. And I'm actually going to apply some of my transition shade, this satin called Daisy. And I ended up really blending this all the way out and almost mixing it with my blush. It was like my eye look and my blush were really melded together and all part of this one color application onto the face. I thought that ended up looking really cool and just a little bit different but not so over dramatic that it felt unwearable or uncomfortable for me. I will say that the mattes in here are not my personal favorite formula and they ended up working out just fine because I did do a lot of layering and ultimately I layered shimmers over all of the mattes. So it worked out just fine in the end, but I do think that the shimmers outperform the mattes in this particular palette. I would probably swap out about half of the shades in this palette to make my own personal custom perfect wildflower palette. But if you know me, you know that I absolutely love purple. I love wearing really, really shimmery eyeshadow. So I definitely ended up with a look to love. I will say that while I don't think the mattes performed perfectly well on their own, they do layer like a dream. I did sort of a matte sandwich with this foxglove shade and it looked so beautiful. It gave me the impact and the opacity that I was looking for. And I thought about doing some bright pop of color liner or adding a little half lash or something. But at the end of the day, this look was so impactful on its own. I really like the way that the blush and the eyes work together. I love that this look feels fresh and springy, it has a little bit of drama to it, but it's not super overwhelming. It still feels true to my style, but it also makes me feel a little fancy, a little shiny, a little extra. And, you know, it gives me a little casually sweaty cheek too, which I always, always appreciate in a look. Overall, I really like this entire collection. Personally, the blushes are the thing that I'm most initially drawn towards. But I have to say there are no duds in this collection at all for me. The Haze lip creams are incredibly comfortable. I'm somebody who has very dry lips. I do not wear anything uncomfortable. I just feel like I'm too old to wear anything that's not comfortable. And I think these lip creams are the perfect balance between being matte enough that they have a great wear time and a great flattering opacity on the lips but they're not so matte that they're super dry and they feel like they're just sucking the life out of your lips. You know, those ultra, ultra matte lip products that feel like they almost just shrink wrap onto your lips. I really dislike products like that. These feel like the perfect formula. They're a satiny matte. They're not completely transfer proof, but they are very long wearing for me. I get several nice hours of wear time out of these. As for the palette, I love the packaging. This feels very bright and springy and happy and I really, really enjoy the theming of the palette, this whole collection really. I like the shades in here. These are definitely colors I see myself wearing a lot. My main downside of this palette, I guess, is that a bunch of the shimmers look too similar to me. You can already kind of tell in the pan that a few of these are quite similar, but once they're swatched, I really do struggle to see enough contrast to justify the price point. My personal recommendation is to get the palette, the empty palette, and build your own and grab some of the new shades and maybe mix in some of their other shadows. Let me know if you wanna see some suggestions I love the Lethal Cosmetics Palette Builder Tool, and I would be very happy 
to show you a couple of alternate versions if you think that would be helpful. I think that would be really fun. That's definitely the type of thing I love to do. Overall, I think everything is really pretty, performs exceptionally well, as is the norm for lethal cosmetics. Definitely a couple shades I would tweak personally for the palette, but that's also sort of up to my personal taste as well as it will be for your enjoyment of this color story. Now's the time when I wanna hear what you think about this collection. Are you interested? Have you picked anything up? Do you have any of these products on your wish list? I always love to hear what you think about things too, so make sure you leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Very springy. Finally remembered to wear earrings. I keep forgetting to put them on before I film. Something about this blush is very 80s to me, but I like it. Just the color and the way that I put it all the way up around my eyebrow is giving me very 80s vibes. They say haze, but I feel like it's plush something. Plush haze, haze plush, something like that. Haze plush lip cream, yes. Do you know how many hundreds of makeup products I have to remember the name of? I'm impressed every time I remember it, every single time. And the singles, and I, uh, dang it. I totally zoned out there for a minute. I might have even had a weird look on my face. It's going great. <laughs> this really bright pinky blush is just very cute. I didn't think it would be necessarily flattering for my skin tone, but I think it looks pretty good. I like it. I like it. I'm definitely gonna wear this eye look again, for sure. This bluish purple is just beautimous, beautimous. All right, thanks for watching. I'm always glad. Every time, anytime you bring that beautiful little face of yours around here, I'm glad to see it. And I hope that you're having a great day. I will talk to you real soon, okay? All right, I love your face. Bye-bye.